Hey guys, this will be my second video in my series of videos covering the top 10 pieces of artwork from each of the Anachronism card sets. This video will cover set number 2. So first off at number 10, I have King Arthur by Michael Cormark. King Arthur is a medieval mythological figure who was the head of the Kingdom of Camelot and the Knights of the Round Table. It is not actually known whether King Arthur is a real historical figure, but he may have been based off a 5th to 6th century British warrior who staved off invading Saxons. And I really like this piece just because of how much detail the artist has included in everything. I really like how the background looks cool with the birds and the snow, and you can even see dead bodies on the ground, which presumably King Arthur has fought and slain. I also like the detail that the artist has included on King Arthur's shield and on King Arthur's sword, which I presume to be the legendary sword Excalibur. You can see the blood from the battle he fought with the people in the background. And it really just goes to show you how formidable an individual King Arthur was. So at number 10, King Arthur. At number 9, I have Bing Fa by William O'Connor. Bing Fa in English means The Art of War, which is the world famous book written by Sun Tzu. It is one of the most influential texts on military strategy and tactics, and has been one of the most prominent works in East Asia on the subject. I really like this picture because of the detail the artist has included in the frontline soldiers standing at attention, and Sun Tzu's walking down just looking like a total badass. And I also really like how the artist emphasized the color in the foreground. As you can see, the background does not have as much color as the foreground does, and I really feel that it emphasizes what's going on in the front of the picture, which I really like. That's actually a common theme, as you'll notice throughout set number two. So at number nine, Bing Fa. At number eight, I have Richard the Lionheart by Greg Staples. Richard the Lionheart was also known as Richard I and was a king of England in the 12th century. He was so called Richard the Lionheart because of his reputation as a fearsome military leader and fighter. I think this piece is awesome, and I think it's even more awesome when you blow it up to full size. You can really see the detail in all the horses and the warriors, and it really makes the piece that much better. I also think his cape looks really majestic. Similar to the previous piece, I also like how the artist only colored in Richard the Lionheart as it makes his presence feel that much more fearsome and prominent. So at number 8, Richard the Lionheart. At number 7, I have Bajizwa by Therese Nielsen. I do not know how to pronounce this name, so I apologize if I've mispronounced it. The Bajizwa, according to the flavor text, was an Egyptian weapon that was easily concealed in the linen and silk robes of the time. It was a deadly close-range weapon capable of striking with very little warning. And one thing I really like about this piece is how the artist included the snake in addition to the weapon. I feel that the inclusion of the snake makes the weapon feel even more deadly and dangerous. So at number 7, Bajizwa. At number 6, I have Chivalry by Greg Staples. The concept of chivalry originally arose around the ideals of military bravery service to others, and individual training. Over time, however, the definition of chivalry became redefined to emphasize moral and social virtues more generally. I really like this piece because, similar to previous pieces, I think it's really cool how the artist only colored in the foreground for emphasis. I also like the artist's simple use of colors, which in this case are red and green. I also think the background, in particular, the moon and the castle, look really awesome. So at number 6, Chivalry. At number 5, I have Excalibur by Michael Comark. Excalibur is the legendary sword of King Arthur and is sometimes attributed with having magical powers. As King Arthur lay dying after a battle, he ordered his companion, Sir Bedivere, to grab Excalibur and cast it into a nearby lake. After Sir Bedivere did, the Lady of the Lake appeared from the water, grabbed Excalibur, and pulled the sword underwater. I really like this piece because of the tranquil setting by the lake, 
and the action and the story behind what is about to happen. Sir Bedivere is casting Excalibur into the lake, and the Lady of the Lake will soon appear to grab Excalibur and take it back into the lake. So at number 5, Excalibur. At number 4, I have Ju Rong by James Ryman. Ju Rong is an important figure in Chinese mythology and folk religion, and he is the god of fire and of the south. He is associated with some of the principal and early myths of China. I really like this piece because of how realistic and ferocious the tiger looks. I also like the colors the artist used in the background. Ju Rong definitely looks like someone you do not want to mess with. So at number 4, Ju Rong. At number 3, I have Merlin the Wise by Michael Comark. Merlin the Wise is a legendary figure best known as the wizard featured in Arthurian legend and medieval Welsh poetry. He is based on a combination of historical and legendary figures. He engineers the birth of Arthur through magic and intrigue and serves as an advisor to him throughout his life. I really like the tranquil and beautiful setting in this piece. The detail on everything is just amazing and it's a really high quality piece. Merlin the Wise actually kind of reminds me of Gandalf from Lord of the Rings in this piece. So number three, Merlin the Wise. At number two, I have Full Mail Halberg by Greg Staples. According to the flavor text, Full Mail Halberg is a shirt of mail designed to withstand blows from a charging knight. It's cumbersome and unwieldy, but effective. And similar to so many other pieces of artwork in set number two, I really like how they only colored in the warrior for emphasis. In particular, I think the warrior's sword and his tattered outfit look really cool. I also like how the artist included in the background the birds and the castle. I actually think the black grayish tint on with the birds in the castle make it look even cooler. And overall, I think Greg Staples was just one of the best artists that Anachronism had, and his Richard the Lionheart set, which this is a part of, is definitely one of the best sets for artwork in the entire collectible card game. So at number two, Full Male Halberk. And finally, at number one, I have Lady of the Lake by Michael Comark. The Lady of the Lake is a mysterious figure who lives in an enchanted underwater realm. In Arthurian legend, she gives King Arthur his sword Excalibur and is the ruler of Avalon. And one of the things I like most about this piece is the contrast between the very angelic looking Lady of the Lake holding the very powerful sword Excalibur. I also think the scenery and background look really tranquil and beautiful. As you can see the mist, I think that's really cool, which seems to be a trend in the King Arthur set. So that concludes my top 10 video for set number two. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys tune in for set number three and future sets. Until next time. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out my other videos related to this card game.